Hello everybody, happy new year and welcome to the live stream. Uh, just for a quick check uh, of the chat, uh, can you hear me, can you see me? Um, although I'm an engineer, I'm not very good with this uh, live streaming stuff yet. Um, and if you can hear me correctly, uh, let me know uh, Let me know your New Year's resolutions. I'm really interested in hearing uh, what your plans are for 2023. Um, I saw a lot of Dutch people in the chat already. So I'm now figuring out if I need to continue this uh, live stream in English or in Dutch. Um, uh, so yeah... <laughs> Uh, I also see a lot of English in the chat. Okay, that's good. That's good. All right. I'm seeing that everything sounds good. Everything is uh, prima. Alles gaat goed. Yeah, okay. Okay, awesome. Awesome. Yeah, uh, drop your drop your New Year's resolution in the chat. And um, yeah, my, my New Year's resolution, I actually have a lot of them. Um, but the, the one that is the most interesting for now is uh, starting with regular live streams. And that's basically because I think it's fun and because I want to try it out. And my goal right now is to go for 12 live streams. So doing one every month. And I think I'm going to try to schedule them a little bit random so that um you know with time zones and stuff that everybody around the world um you know get get, get to join a live stream um um right now today this live stream is going to be very basic it's also going to be a little bit of a proof of concept for all the technical stuff that i had to set up um let's let's see if this will make it <laughs> until the end of uh to the end of the live stream. Uh, last time I live streamed was directly after I rebuilt my studio to, to answer all the questions from all of you. And that didn't go very well. Um, um, but but let's see let's see if it if it keeps uh, running uh, right now. And uh, you know from here I want to build it out in small steps and you know try things out. Uh, things that I can do in a live stream could be for instance um, discussing news, uh, cr creating discussions as well, maybe discussions around the news, uh, inviting people over physically or taking calls, uh, maybe taking calls with viewers, um, guidance calls, whatever. Uh, I have a lot of ideas. Um, today is going to be unboxing time. It's going to be uh, Q&A time. Um, I'm actually going to do my uh, members Q&A in this live stream. So um, you all can, can see the Q&A. And if there's any time left, uh, I will turn to the chat and answer any questions in the chat, uh, any super chats, of course. If, if super chats come in, I will always take a look at them and uh, answer them. Um, yeah, let me see. Oh, yeah. Another thing to celebrate, by the way, is that the channel now has 150,000 subscribers. We actually ticked that at uh, the 31st of December. So I started 2023 with a YouTube channel of 150,000 subscribers, which is something I I didn't think was poss possible when I started the YouTube channel. Uh, I thought like 30K, 35K I thought that was the size of the whole audio engineering community, but apparently there are way more people in there. So, uh, so yeah, great fun, and um, yeah, I, I think I, I think we should we should move on to the to the boxes and the unboxing because um, that's what the title is about, and I shouldn't clickbait you all too much. I'm all, I, I know I know I'm clickbaiting a lot. I know it works. Anyway, uh, I've got three boxes. Uh, this, these are two boxes uh, connected together. So let's uh, let's open them. I already opened this one because I wanted to check uh, uh, what what was in there because it, it wasn't really labeled very well. Yeah, this is going well. Next time, bring a knife. All right, box number one. Let's see what's in the other one. Oh man. Do I have something to cut here? Yeah. Goals for 2023 for my studio, updating my Yamaha 
HS7 to a pair of Adam audio speakers, but finishing and releasing my first album is a priority this year. Uh, very cool, very cool that you're investing in speakers and monitoring. I think it's the best thing to invest in. I would say make sure that your acoustics are good as well. Like acoustics are always um, you know, forgotten. That's the first one. Still don't know what's in the box. Well, I know, I know. All right. Now ah, this is also a nothing, nothing box. Another box. All right, so let's put that one here. The third package. Many congrats, loving the evolution of the channel throughout the years. Hope you know what a godsend. Like an accent, but from heaven, you were through lockdown. Oh, thank you very much. Thank you very much. Yeah, um, yeah. Lockdown was an uh, was an interesting period, um, also for YouTube, and um, for me it was also a little bit of, a little bit of a way out. Like there there wasn't a lot of audio work to do as well because there weren't any any budgets anymore. Like artists weren't performing, so they didn't want to spend a lot of uh, a lot of cash on, on production. So I, so I hadn't. I, I didn't have a lot of things to do, so I was like, yeah, let's just make videos. And uh, yeah, I remember I did a live stream during lockdown as well, yeah. All right, another box. Uh, this has address details on it. Um, ah, this is saying something. This is something. This is uh, Sony C80. So let's put that one over here. I need a wider angle camera. Um, da -da 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 -da. Would also be interested in your opinion about the Slate Digital VSX headphones. So, um, headphones, speakers, they're all very difficult to, to review. Uh, how I like to do rev reviews and... Did I cut myself? Uh, I think I'm okay. Otherwise, I'll need to t need to get a, pla a plaster. Um, yeah, I know the, the box is a bit low. Yeah, I know, I know. I should have I should have thought about that before. Um, yeah. Oh my God, I did cut myself. Let's hope I'll be okay. And otherwise, another microphone. Interesting. <laughs> so um, again, about the headphones. Um, I'll talk about this a little bit more when I've, uh, you know, fully unboxed these and tested these a little bit because I'm planning to test these things on on the live stream as well. Um, problem is, I can say a lot uh, about those things, but I cannot really bring it across. Um, cool thing with plugins, for instance, you can see what I'm doing and you can hear what I'm doing, and in the end, it's all about the sound. And with VSX. Like, if you want to experience it, you have to wear the VSX. So, um, then it would be an opinionated piece. Um, and, um, you know, I, I want to be able to provide some kind of proof. Um, and the other issue is, and this is something that, that I've discussed with a few headphone manufacturers already as well. Like, uh, I, I tested uh, the o Odyssey headphones uh, and I decided not to review them because... Um, to my opinion, they weren't that good. But the problem is just that my monitoring system is just very good. So everything that I'm testing is not not that good because that's my standard, that's my reference point. So for me, it's very difficult to um, to know the extra value for people when it comes to speakers, especially. Um, if uh, if you would, for instance, have like a very low quality set of speakers, then high-end headphones would be a big step forward for you. But for me, it's very difficult to to level that. So uh, that's it's really a struggle for me to um, to make those type of videos. Ah, and there it is. Finally, the last box. I did clean my studio before, but now, now it's a complete mess again. 
Lose the sharp metal scissors from the face. Yeah, I'll, I'll do that. I'll do that. Yeah, okay. Yeah, done. <laughs> done. <laughs> oh, if every live stream is going to be this much of a mess, then... Um, uh, <laughs> um, yeah. Um, so, I've got the OD5. I've got the OC7. And I got the uh, Sony C80. The OC7 is a condenser and the OD5 is a dynamic microphone. And the C80 is a condenser, I think, as well. Yeah, condenser. Which one do you all want me to open first? Or should I just, you know, start somewhere? Let, let's check the chat. Austrian Audio are one of my favorite companies of 2022. Yeah, they, they make very good stuff. They make very, very good stuff and uh, have some very interesting engineering. Which monitors are you using? I'm using the Quasar setup from Lenart. Uh, I made a video about that last year. Uh, I'm actually the second person in the world that uh, that has uh, these speakers. As far as I know, I don't know. Um, left, left. Okay, my left. This, uh, my left. My left. This is my left. Sony. The Sony. Just wing it. Okay. C80. Uh, anyway, my speakers, um, they aren't widely available and I think they will never be widely available because uh, all the installs of that system is a custom. To really buy it as a system, um, including guidance and stuff. Um, Leonard doesn't really want to, you know, ship those speakers in boxes and then uh, create an environment in which they do not perform 100%. Like... Uh, he really wants his system to, to perform at, at a high level. And uh, uh, that that's just really cool. Um, but yeah, Len Leonard, th there's a video about it. Email me if you if you want to get a link. Then uh, I or somebody else will get that link to you. Uh, oh my God. I, I, I don't know if I need to send these ones back. So I need to be careful. Um, OC7. Oh, oh I, I'm doing the wrong one. The OC7? First OC7 or C80? Uh, anyway, I th I'm seeing a lot of C80, so let let's leave that for the last because save the best for the last. I will never use sharp objects anymore in live streams. I think that would be a good New Year's resolution. Don't cut yourself. All right, so the OC7. Yeah, this is the OC7. Okay. Man, I'm getting tangled up in my in my wiring here. Um, all right, so another box. What is this? Let, let's see if there's marketing text on here. Let's make it a little bit of snake oil. No, there's no marketing text on here. Oh, okay. Um, cool pouch. And in the pouch. Oh, some people are screaming dynamic. Dynamic microphones are very underestimated. There's they're most of the times very good. We've got so. Silica gel, um, quick start guide, uh, quality certificate, and we've got oh ASMR. Uh, the microphone, which is way smaller than I thought, and in this case, size kind of matters in the terms that you want to have it maybe a little bit smaller because um, I think yeah this is an instrument microphone and I think it's intended to use on drums um, I'll, I'll, I'll of course you know check that out um, watching you use scissors and nerfing <laughs> would be a bloody good stream yeah <laughs> bloody um, um, anyway uh, when you have, for instance, a snare drum, uh, when you're micing up drums, uh, it's, it's, at least from my experience, um, it's always difficult to, to place a microphone because there are a lot of stands already. You have your hi-hat stand, you have, uh, you know, the snare drum stand, and there's also a stand for, um, uh, for the cymbal that is, um, you know, at the same spot there. And uh, sometimes there's also even a, a tom stand, like uh, some more vintage drum kits, they, they have a tom uh, on a separate stand. Uh, so there's, there's you know, not a lot of place to put to put your stands. And, and with a microphone like this that you can angle and that it's small, you know, th that's, I think, the, the selling point of this thing. And it can go, you know, all the way around. Um, let me see. This thing... 
Yeah, it uh, on the back. Let me let me film this from from up close. Let's see, let's see if that works. I hope it will. Uh, do 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 do. Um, which button do I need to press? I think I need to press this one. Yeah, there it is. So um, you can see that uh, that it has two settings. Basically, it has a, a pad and a uh, high pass filter on it and and that's basically it it's a it's a very simple simple microphone um now how does it sound um we can figure that out because i have a mic stand over here and an extra cable over here and I can just switch the audio we don't see yet oh you need to switch the video feed I did switch the video feed oh oh wait okay yeah now I know uh, what happened yeah that's uh, that's where you see that I don't have a lot of a uh, lot of experience here let me check let me let me check this thing again it doesn't switch yeah okay so it's oh okay <laughs> uh yeah i know i needed to press uh, the transition knob as well there you go all right so for the next one i will uh, I, I will do that um all right so this is a condenser right condenser microphone all right, uh, let me switch to this one so that you can hear me talking through this one. Let's give it a few seconds, by the way. Yeah, there it is, there it is, there it comes. All right, all right, so this is the OC, OC whatever. No, is it, was it OC? I, I don't remember. <laughs> those those microphone names is very, um, it, it's very, yeah. They're not very logical. Like, like I've I've got you know the Game Lab Empress or the Tegler Cram or the the the, the Illusia Expressor, and the microphone is always like OD5 uh, C80. Like, well, like why don't they come up with cool names for microphones? Anyway, um, this is how it sounds uh, without any compression or something. Um, so yeah, uh, I'm of course going to test it. And uh, now we're back at the Lewitt here. Um, the the issue um, uh, with with testing these microphones and and that's also so uh, you know that's basically what I wanted to discuss when it comes to making uh, useful videos. Um, the issue with making uh, microphone videos um, is, um, is yeah th th there are just a lot of a lot of challenges in there. Um, the biggest challenge right now for me to make good microphone reviews and with a good microphone review i mean a review such as the um as the video uh, that i did for the oc818 from uh, austrian um i really want to show the capabilities of the microphone so that means that i want to record some music with it and also you know compare it with a few other microphones so that you have a baseline of like okay this is how a microphone that i know sounds and this is how um how the new microphone sounds and in order to do that i need to rent a studio i need to rent uh, a, a camera guy because i will be very busy with recording and i need to rent uh or rent i need to hire a musician it's all very very expensive to make those microphones and at this moment um making these videos is, is basically a loss for me <laughs> like like uh, it doesn't make any profit at least not directly for me um and um one of the things that I'm, I'm working on and, wh and what I'm building on is, is creating more revenue with the YouTube channel to cover those costs with the community. Um, I actually did, uh, you know, discuss this topic with, uh, well, the marketing agency uh, behind Austrian. Uh, I'm not in direct contact with Austrian. There's, a, there's an agency in between. And they, they offered me to, to, to pay those costs. And that's, of course, very cool. But... <laughs> It just doesn't feel right. It doesn't feel right. It 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 feels that then that, that that I'm making making a commercial instead of 
creating an, an independent perspective then. So uh, I, I really believe that it's possible to cover costs of, of a proper microphone review um, with the community. Um, so yeah, and, and for these ones, I, I will pay them myself and just take the loss because uh, I only think that, you know, this this can become bigger and become self-sustaining if... Um, Oh, I removed the clamp. I'm a bit ADHD, but maybe you all know. Um, <laughs> uh, but I think that, that this can only um, uh, become self-sustaining if I get started making these videos. So I'm going to uh, to do the upfront investment and, and hopefully um, it, I will be able to cover the costs of, of making these videos. Anyway, the OD5, so that's a dynamic one. That's, I think, what the D stands for. I don't know what... Yeah, the O, I think, is the Austrian audio label. And the 5 is... Uh, I don't know what it means. Basically the same microphone, but just the dynamic one. So that will be interesting. I think I'll I'll make one video with both microphones so that you can hear the difference between between these these two. Um, oh, it seems super directional, proximity sensitive by comparison. Unless the loot is compressed. The loot is compressed. Yeah, yeah. It's not a fair comparison. Um... Of course, I'm using compression on the Lewitt because, uh, uh, yeah, that's just, you know, the, the, the way that I'm doing my voice uh, on a live stream and actually um, in, in videos as well. Chan Epic uh, just sent a super chat for $10. Uh, thank you very much. All right, OD5. One annoying thing here, by the way. I'm using the uh, Lewitt Connect 6 for the audio here. And um, D for shape. Oh, maybe. Um, I don't know what... Yeah, anyway. Shaped like a D. Um, anyway, uh, I'm using the Lewitt Connect 6 interface. And one thing that is very annoying here is that I cannot see my gain level uh, when the channel is muted. So that's... That's very... Very annoying. So I have to unmute it and then gain it up. And now unmute the the loop. Hey, that's interesting. Hello. Ah, yeah. Really sounds like a dynamic microphone. I can also talk directly into it, and you can hear that. You know, it it it's completely different when, you know. Yeah, yeah. I I really have to talk into it directly. It's really really like a dynamic microphone. Anyway. Um, no, no, thank you. Been a subscriber for years. It's the least I could do. Thank you very much. Thank you. It's it's highly appreciated, and it's it's, you know, um, that it sounds weird, but you know, all these things that I'm doing, um, it's it's my way of keeping the channel alive. Um, you know, all the different revenue models, including merchandise, memberships, um, affiliate links. They're all all in the description down below, by the way. But um, I really want to do it that way. Uh, it could be a little bit annoying to watch the viewer maybe, but um, the other option would literally be sponsored content. And, you know, what? There's, you know, there's value in that for me because it makes money, but there's there's almost no value in there for the viewer. And there is a lot of sponsored content out there from audio YouTubers, believe me. Yeah, there's a, there's a lot. I know a few inside stories. Like, like, I know a few YouTubers that literally just said to me that... Yeah, I, I, I cannot really talk about that, but it happens. It really happens. Oh, okay. And now this converter, thread converter sticks on here. Annoying. Yeah. All right. And now the Sony. The Sony. Finally the Sony. You can do sponsor content. Why not? Uh, because it, uh, uh, because I cannot, you know, I, I won't be independent that way. I just want to... Um, I just want to give an independent view and my own view and, and not being influenced by, by manufacturers. I actually want to yeah, well not fully stay away from them because sometimes I really need them in order to make better videos. But, you know, stay, staying away of their influence. That's, 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 that's what feels the best. There's nothing wrong with doing sponsored content, sponsored videos. It depends on the format and how honest you're allowed to be. Yeah, well, <laughs> I would only do it if I would be allowed to be fully honest. Um, but the problem is just like like I've I've talked with a few 
people, of course, about sponsored content with companies uh, because they, they offered me something. And then you're looking into their terms and conditions and then you're seeing like, okay, they've got a lot of a lot of stuff to uh, to screw me over. Now, let and, and he, here's, the, here's the annoying part. So let's say a company pays me and, and you know, they... they if they want to, they can pay a lot. So they pay, they're paying me a lot. They're paying me upfront probably or, or partly upfront. I receive the product. I'm going to get to work with that product. And the product sucks. What what do you want me to do then? Because then I'm getting into to a very nasty situation. Because the company that doesn't want me to do that because they, they pay for marketing. They're not paying for for, you know being shit on um on the other side um the uh the viewers also want to know if something isn't good like you want to have a buying advice but you also want to have a do not buy advice I, i think that is a very interesting uh thing to have like I'm seeing so many videos of like, this is amazing, this is amazing. And I'm like, yeah, okay. But some things aren't just, just aren't amazing. Or some things, you know, have some caveats. Like they're amazing for, for a certain thing, but not amazing for other things. And um, um, those situations I want to avoid. And there's actually a story. I had a, I had a, uh, I don't know how much I can disclose about this because it's still not fully finished. I had an interface uh, that was sent to me as a review and it was from a very, very reputable company, very reputable. And I looked at the interface and I was like, okay, yeah, this is great. The concept is great. There are a lot of good things about it, but the software sucks. And I emailed them about that. Like, hey, uh, can I, can we get into a video call about this? Because um, I think there's something wrong with the software. And it basically was the user friendliness of the software. So the, the interface was aimed at uh, home producers, uh, beginning producers that, that had a higher budget, um, that just wanted to buy quality. And the, um, uh, the software was basically a ported software from their bigger interface. And it was super, super, super complicated um, software. Um, and... It was so complicated that even f- friends of me, like like colleagues of me, they couldn't figure out the software as well. Like like I gave them the interface and they they you know, one guy it took took him like 15 minutes or something to to just enable the microphone preamp because of how complicated it was. So I said that to them and they said, oh yeah yeah we value your feedback and we want to like take a look at it. And I said like yeah. Um, Take a look at it. If you can change the software, I, I gave them a few tips. Uh, it, it would be wise to do it. And I would, of course, cover that in my video, blah, blah, blah. And then it was radio silence for a long time. And then all of a sudden I got an email because I waited. I, I waited on that review. Um, it, was, it, it wasn't it was focused, right? But I'm, I'm not going to say who it was, actually. Um, <laughs> um, but I... Um, I waited a long time and then all of a sudden I got an email like, hey, uh, you need to send the unit back because they were doing their their balancing for the end of the year or something or whatever uh, stupid thing they had. And now they're out of contact again. And the weird thing is, and and I keep wondering that, what would have happened if I would just have made a review? Because if I would completely shit on the software of that unit, I have a feeling... That, that if that would blow up, of course, if it would get a lot of clicks, if it would go a little bit viral or something. I do have a feeling that that company would have changed that software around in a few months. I, I don't know how difficult the software was, but I'm pretty sure that they, they, they would have already been done with it. Because we're talking about like a year ago, roughly a year ago right now. So, um, yeah. Um, um, but but those, those things are very, very difficult. I saw a comment... Uh, but why don't you do reviews sponsored on the products you love? Because I do not know yet if the product, if if I love the product, like like I want I, the products that I love are in my studio already, and 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 most of them I've talked I've talked about it already. So um, and and the products that I love, I just I just buy them for the mixing mastering business uh, because I need them. Um, and if I don't know if a product is good or not, um, you know, I. Yeah, I don't know. I don't know how to how to do that. 
I, I haven't figured that thing out. The Sony C whatever. What is, was it again? The Sony C80. The C80. Um, all right, so box. And in the box is, what's this? First look. Oh, this is the shock mount. All right, okay. So so we're, we're making, we're creating a little bit of suspense here. Creating a little bit of sus suspense. Um, <laughs> why not making your own products? <laughs> Holy cannoli, that, that's like a whole different... I'm, I'm not Linus Tech Tips that makes his own screwdriver. I'm a, you know... I'm the only full-time person working in this in this company. I've got I've got two assistants that, that you know, work part-time for me, that basically do my email and manage everything and making sure that everybody, you know, stays in contact and, and gets managed and, and stuff. Um, uh, but that's everything. I've got... Th those are the three person work person's working in in YT studio and uh you know i've got two friends on who i can rely on uh, uh for doing engineering stuff and that's it <laughs> so i cannot make my own products oh here it is look the sony look 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 how tiny it is kunnen we het even hebben over het woordje deuntje? Uh, can we talk about the word, the Dutch word deuntje? Uh, no, yeah, we can, but maybe in private some, someday. Uh, not on the live stream. Look, this is the Sony. It's, um, it's really small again. But maybe, maybe that's because that Lurid microphone is just super, um, you know, it's, it's, it's ginormous. Maybe, maybe I should swap it out. You know, one day with, with one of these, maybe. Maybe I should do a few videos as well with these mics. Just swap videos throughout. Just swap mics throughout the videos. Um, yeah. That was very plasticky shock mount. Very plasticky. I don't know what this thing costs. What is the... Can anybody look up the new the new price of the Sony C... What was it again? C80? Um, it, it feels... This feels really cheap. It feels like I'm, I can break this in five seconds or something. And microphone equipment should never feel cheap because your microphone equipment is basically, they're basically your, your bulletproof vests in the studio. Like like everything that's, it, that's in, your, in your control room, like it's kind of screwed in or something. Everything that's in the recording room, you know, it's all at risk. All right, the Sony C80. 577 euros. Hmm, okay. Like, um, the, the interesting thing is um, the studio that I started in, Sound Vision, and I mean, that I'm still in that building. Um, I, I started in that studio and like the microphones in there were they're worth more than some second-hand cars, like U47s, RCA ribbons, like the whole Neumann collection, the whole Neumann, the uh, vintage Neumann collection. So when I, whenever I see a microphone priced at 500 euros, I think like, oh, that's pretty cheap. But 500 euros or 600 euros, it's a lot of money. It's a lot of money. So um, yeah, it's it's really. I, I really okay okay let's try this out there's no pop filter included right or is there no no a lot of booklets a lot of booklets yeah oh oh here you can see how to use the uh, the microphone and, uh, i know how a microphone works i hope i better hope so all right uh let's switch uh -huh, uh -huh, uh -huh, uh -huh. all right the so whoa that doesn't sound right Hello? Maybe? Oh, okay. That's why it doesn't sound right. It faced the wrong... Yeah, <laughs> that's better. <laughs> oh, wow. Failure on the live stream, live on camera. Yeah. Um, yeah, of course. Of course, the logo is on this side. You always need to talk into the logo. Uh, except, for, except for... Except except for the Lewitt microphone. I turned it around. You can... Um, you can... Uh, you know, reverse the microphone and uh, really boomy. Oh, okay, interesting. I cannot really hear it correctly because, you know, I also have my, you know, I, I have to record this and later listen to this. Um, very boomy, very opaque. Yeah, <laughs> I think these comments were from when I had it the other way around. Anyway, 
Um, I have the Lewitt microphone turned around because I I love Lewitt, but I don't think their logo should be in every video uh, of me. It it it's kind of yeah. I, I don't know. I don't know. And I do like the 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 vibe of the of the tube glow in there. So uh, LCT is definitely the better mic. Yeah, but come on, the LCT costs three and a half thousand euros. <laughs> I mean, what do you want? I do think that I do like the top end of this one a lot. Um, yeah. I hope I know how a mic works. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I hope I know. Yeah. I love Sony C-Series, but this one, not feeling the high frequency love from the C800 or C100. Should I, should I, um, you know, I, I'm, I'm immediately... Uh, like my head is already in, in like writing mode and like figuring out what the video is going to be. Should I should I try to get a C800 and a C100? I think I know somebody that has a C100, I think. Uh, but to compare it? Or should I compare it to other microphones in the same uh, price range? Uh, or, or what should I do? Like, like I cannot do all because um, I'm going to... Um, to hire a, a vocalist, I already know who uh, who I'm going to hire. Uh, it's actually going to be the third time that I'm asking her, and <laughs> um, the last two times, you know, manufacturers just forgot to send me a microphone or whatever. Uh, anyway, um, I want to have the capsules very close to each other and record the same take. And um, uh, if I'm going to do a Sony to Sony to Sony comparison, I have three microphones. I can maybe fit in one more, and then that's it. Uh, but I cannot, you know, compare like 12 microphones or something because that's that's an, an issue. Um, compared to SM58, yeah. Uh, I don't have an SM58. This whole building doesn't have an SM58. Sound Vision doesn't have SM58. Or 57. We still need the RME ADI duck converter shootout. Yeah, but how do you want to how do you want to do that shootout? Because, um, you know, I can, whatever, I can do an, an ADDA conversion and, and show you how that sounds. I can do a, uh, you know, a graphical thing where you see graphs with, with different types of sine waves pumped through it or something. What, how do you want me to, 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 to do that? Because I cannot show it because the details that we're talking about probably won't even come through the codec from YouTube because YouTube still doesn't do lossless audio. Like the whole world can do lossless audio. YouTube can do lossless 8K HDR video, but cannot do uh, lossless audio. Why? I, they, 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 should, they should be able to. Um, that was a small rant. Um... Does the building have a sure SM7? I think I think somewhere, yeah. Yeah, we do have an SM7 somewhere, yeah. I think. <laughs> I I would need to ask George, of course. George, the the great engineer uh, that uh, joined me in my mastering video, um, uh, that actually did the mastering in that video, and I actually have some content planned uh, with him, some very interesting content, because he can do more than just mastering. He's actually a multi-instrumentalist uh, and, you know, studio owner with like 30 years of experience, 35. I, d I don't know, <laughs> a lot of experience and stuff. So, yeah, um, a lot of content coming uh, in combination with Sound Vision Studio, which is like, I'm really excited about that. Anyway, um, I'm going to uh, pause the chat and uh, pause uh, taking a look at the chat right now to do my members Q&A. So um, my memberships, uh, my members uh, on Patreon and on YouTube, they get a bit uh, extra uh, content and, and some extra features. And one of them is we're doing a uh, Q&A every month. And my idea is to um, include that Q&A in my live streaming videos. So uh, they can ask the questions and uh, they will be certain that I'm answering them in the live stream. And I'm also going to post this, uh, this video, this live stream uh, to my membership pages. Um, um, so yeah, I didn't get a lot of questions this time, probably because it was December, probably because things were a bit snowed in, both literally and figuratively. I think snowed in isn't an English saying, but it's a Dutch way of saying it. And because we have a lot of Dutchies in here, we can do that. Um, the first comment that um, uh, that came in, it actually both 
the questions were from the same user. Um, I did enjoy your review of Reaper four years ago. It would be nice if you are still using it to give some tricks and tips and what you like and what you dislike about Reaper. Um, so... Um, I don't, I don't really make Reaper videos anymore. I, I made a few Reaper tutorials, but Reaper is very uh, complex. And I also saw that there are a lot of great YouTubers that really can explain Reaper a lot better than I can. Um, I've built Reaper to watch my, to watch my own thing, to watch my own setup. Uh, actually I have a stream deck here where, uh, you know, I don't know if you can see it, um, but it has, it has numbers on there. And this is all for the analog gear. Oh yeah, my system is turned off actually. Um, but it's all for my analog gear. So I can do my routing now completely from the Stream Deck. It's it's amazing. Um, and um, if you also want to do that uh, or do something else with Reaper, my top tip is to ask Chat GPT to write you a script for Reaper because it can and it's amazing. It just, you know, Something that took me like six hours to figure out. Chat GPT wrote the script in like five seconds or something. So, um, so yeah, that's really, uh, really cool. Uh, but yeah, about Reaper, um, again, there are a lot of better channels to watch for Reaper than mine. And um, I, I just really like to make stuff and make videos that other people do not make. And um, this means that I can either talk about different subjects or talk about subjects uh, from my own perspective and, and with my own story. So, um, yeah, that's, um, that's my, uh, yeah, that's, that's my Reaper update. I still love it, by the way. I still love it. But yeah, if you really want to have, have some content about Reaper, uh, you should, uh, you should check, uh, check out other channels. Um, now, another interesting question that I had, that I got, let's see, um, is, is Sonable Smart Limiter the best limiter so far, or have you found others? I don't want to spend a lot, but I must increase the loudness of my mix. So, um, as you all know, I've always been a huge FabFilter fanboy. But... I'm starting to become a Sonable fanboy. Um, I think what they're doing is really great. Um, I think I think they're really, you know, taking one step further. Uh, they're really innovating. And something that is really cool from Sonable is their stance towards creators. Um, it, it's just super awesome. Um, you know, I've got very good contact with them. They're very open about engineering questions. Like I don't know who's seen the uh, the interview that I did with uh, with Alex, who is their marketing uh, marketing guy, but actually actually is an engineer. So uh, it's really cool uh, how open they are and how well they provide all the tools that uh, I need and and I'm pretty sure other creators need. To make, uh, <laughs> to make their uh, their videos. Um, oh, is the the John Matthews is in here? He's I think the creator of uh, Toucan, right? Welcome to the live stream. Um, anyway, Sonable's just really uh, uh, really cool. Uh, making an RX killer, I think. But but I, I have no information from them about that. Uh, if, if I would have any information, it would be under NDA. But I think they're working on that. I'm pretty sure they're working on that. I think Alex actually hinted towards that in the interview because he said like, yeah, um, um, uh, noise reduction and stuff um, is something that that he does see a very good future in uh, together with uh, AI, in combination with AI. So... Um, uh, yeah, Sonable is just just really great, and and I think they're they're just getting started, and that's the interesting thing about Sonable. They're just getting started, and they know their things very well. They know their engineering very well. They know their marketing very well because they're not really bullshitting. They're really really 
up to point uh, for the um, uh, f- for the plugins and for the marketing. Or oh, where was I with my story? Um, I'm trying to read the chat and do it. I really need to get experience with live streaming if I want to do this more often. Um, anyway, Sonable, really cool. For the limiters, because that was the question, I use a combination of the Pro L and the uh, Sonable um, True Limit. What was it again? I think True Limit. Um, my view towards limiters has changed. Um if you want to pump up your loudness, yeah, then, then limiters are very, very cool. But if you think about the historic reason why limiters exist, limiters exist to protect the medium that you are recording towards or that you are working towards. Same goes same goes for peak mirrors. They're just to monitor your medium. They have not a lot to do with sound, which is very controversial to say. But limiters shouldn't do anything they, they should just protect a little bit maybe you know do one db or half a db of of limiting that that's what they should do now of course with the loudness war and stuff we really need them and you know uh, they've become way more important but in theory it shouldn't it shouldn't shouldn't be that uh, that important all right, those were the questions uh, from uh, the members. And uh, my plan is to do this live stream for about one hour. Uh, so we've got 12 minutes left. Uh, if you've got any questions, uh, feel free to ask them in the chat. And if you want to make sure that I'm seeing it and answering it, uh, you can send a super chat, of course. And with the super chat, you are, of course, directly supporting the channel and you know directly uh, supporting the making of these uh, microphone videos um john matthews really cool uh did you see my video um that i did together with glenn with the distressor comparison it would be really really nice to to hear your uh, your thoughts about that video and uh, did i do it all correct in your opinion um between Lewitt and Sonnebo, are you ever going to take a trip to Austria and make videos there? Uh, I've been to Austria already. I made a microphone. Actually, this one. I built this microphone at the Lewitt headquarters. There is some... There are some talks about that. And uh, if I'm going to uh, Austria again, uh, I'm pretty sure that I'm going to try to combine it. Um, Sonnebo actually invited me already, but I said to them like, hey... I don't know if if it's um, doable um, or you know valuable to come there just for Sonable um, because they're making software. There's not not a lot to film. There's not a lot to see, at least from my opinion. Maybe maybe that's not true. Uh, with Lewitt, there was a lot to see. I, I got to sit down with uh, one of their engineers, and we assembled a microphone together. A microphone with a special uh, capsule holder. Uh, that was 3D printed with my logo in it, so that was all really cool, and I got to experience uh, how to build a microphone and why you and and also I answered the question why you shouldn't build your own microphones. Um, I might wanna wanna you know do a future video in which I'm going to build a microphone from a DIY kit to see if that's easier or more difficult. Uh, if you want to see that, let me know in the chat. Um, um, but yeah, I'm I'm going to Austria again. One day, I don't know when, but yeah, it, it's kind of already in the talks. I cannot talk about the exact thing that I'm going to do there because I like to surprise everybody uh, with videos. Um, but yeah. Oh, let me. Not a lot of. I. I th- this is the better side of this mug. Um, I know you have your tools regarding DAWs and. But have you ever considered reviewing others simply from a workflow perspective? So DAWs are very extensive. And before you can properly review um, uh, a DAW, you first have to fully learn it and really know it. And it takes, it basically takes years before you can, before you really know your DAW. Like before you can get started in a DAW, it's like five minutes. But before you really get to know the ins and outs and the things to talk about, it takes a lot of time. So I don't, I don't think I can do it properly. Your audio interface recommendation under a thousand dollars. Ooh, good question. Good question. I've noticed that the price still really decides the the quality of an audio interface. N- not always, but a lot of times. Like like I'm running 
one of the most expensive uh, audio interface setups in here. And, uh, he, you know, you can, you can literally hear that. You can literally hear the difference. Um, yeah. Uh, let me see. Seems like you turned all the knobs on my plugin before comparing. Yeah, that's why why comparing video comparison videos are very difficult. Like, from which perspective are you going to compare it? Are you going to compare it from a settings perspective, uh, from a gain reduction perspective, from a let's try to match it as much uh, to the sound, or uh, are you going to compare it from a, a like how inspired do I get from a plugin? Like, it's it's very very difficult. To, to, to do that so uh, so sorry uh, sorry about that but I think it was the better plugin from the test or not or it sounded completely I, I don't I don't remember anymore sorry about that but it was a fun video to make and uh, Glenn is a big fan of your of your plugins uh, I think if not he will answer that and he will shout at me I'm pretty sure <laughs> oops um, have you heard of or tried out the Kirchhoff EQ yeah there's a video about that um, and I think if you just Search for Kirchhoff EQ, you will find my video. Foxrite or Motu are my favorites. Yeah, Foxrite's really cool. Motu, um, not so cool. I just cannot recommend those interfaces uh, with, with a good art. Like, my experiences weren't that good with Motu. Um, I've sold all my Motu interfaces, by the way. And I saw a few questions about that. Like, hey, you're selling broken interfaces. And uh, that wasn't true because I had those uh, interfaces completely revised. So an engineer um, replaced a lot of components in there. Most of all the uh, capacitors, he completely um, changed, not, not changed, but improved the power supply so that the new components that went in there, uh, they're for a very high quality. So they probably would not fail anymore. And that's the state in which I sold them. So, um, uh, yeah, but, but the problem with those motor interfaces were basically they were running too hot and the components they put in there weren't rated for the temperature and started to fill after three or four years. And that's really annoying when you're running a studio where you need to run, you know, production, uh, mixing, mastering. Uh, you cannot be disturbed by a failing power supply. And that's also the really cool, really cool thing about the RME interfaces. They have dual power supply. So if one of them fails, you can use the other one. Is there an overview of the difference of the patron levels? I have seen pretty detailed lists for other patron pages, but on yours might might be me just being stupid, of course. I'm going to note this comment down because I want to be as clear as possible for everything. Um, and if you cannot find a detailed list, that means that it's not uh, that it's not in the correct place. And it should be somewhere else. Uh, but there are basically two tiers. Uh, you've got a basic tier for, uh, I think it's four euros a month, uh, which is early access Q&A and uh, a merchandise discount. Um, whenever new merchandise gets released, you get a little bit of a discount. Um, and the second tier is exclusive content. So behind the scenes, uh, exclusive content, extra content, that kind of stuff. And I finally started to produce extra content on a regular basis. Uh, Patreon tier levels yeah I will um, I'll take a look at that because it should be very clear of course what you're getting um, I mean I'm, I'm always shitting on companies because they're not clear in saying what you're getting and uh, over promising and that kind of stuff so at least I should be clear <laughs> in, in what you're getting um, let me see um didn't know the modem Road 2 was that bad. So I think what they did, what they're doing now is they've switched to other type of interface that are USB-C powered. So they won't have that power supply problem anymore. So um, uh, I think, you know, the old, mo the very old motors were very good. The very new motors can be really good. I don't know. So uh, don't shoot me about that. I, I just cannot know that. Uh, but there it has been a period in, in the middle, the, the AVB interfaces that... Um, were very good, a very, uh, very well priced as well. But now they, uh, you know, after a few years, uh, software support has also been a pain in the ass. And yeah, I didn't like it. it. It was such a relief when I got my RME setup, my complete RME setup like this. I don't even notice that it's there. And that's exactly what a converter should be. Like it should just work, should just do its thing. Completely transparent. All right. Um, 
Is it worth it using a two-track reel-to-reel -reel for tape sound at the recording stage? Yeah. Uh, it could also be worth it from a different perspective, and that's uh, the making choices perspective. Um, um, because if you're recording to tape, um, like I don't know what you want to record, but if you want to, uh, if you want to record a, a whole band, you can mix it to the two track, and then that's it. You made the decisions in your mixing. You, you made all your decisions, and that's that's like really really cool. Um, do you prefer Patreon or YouTube membership? Um, YouTube is a bit uh, bit more smooth in the in the experience, and they're really working hard on those membership features, so it, it works really well. Patreon is is a little bit more difficult uh, to deal with, but uh, Patreon is at least a separate source of income. So if something happens to YouTube, it's nice to have. Uh, have a patron campaign so that doesn't cut off the whole income so it's like you know diversifying the income basically um so yeah it's it's whatever whatever you prefer basically um i i know that that a few people aren't a fan of of google products or a youtube products so that's what why patron is there and youtube memberships yeah I'm I'm really syncing the content on both. Uh, it can happen that there's a timing difference between the two, so that YouTube content comes online a little bit earlier than the Patreon content or the other way around. But I try to, to uh, you know, get it as close to each other as possible. Uh, at least you don't promise become the best mixing engineer on your Patreon, unlike some plugin companies. LOL. I'm so ready for that kind of marketing to go away. Yeah. I don't. The, the issue is that, that if you want to promise that you can make somebody the best mixing engineer, you first have to know what, why a mixing engineer is the best mixing engineer. What does make an engineer the best mixing engineer? What, what, is, the, what is the factor? Because if you know that, then you can maybe do something. But I think it has more to do with a course or with um I, th I think it's 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 mentality most of all so so understanding things in the correct way i don't think it's something you can grasp it's also like taste and stuff so it's it's like th that promise is is so yeah i i cannot i can never make that promise i, I can just say like hey I will try to provide you with my insights and with my opinion about audio engineering and things that I think uh, are good and things that, that I've learned throughout the past. And I also like to talk about, or, or you know, one of my perspectives is uh, I look at things that I wanted to know earlier, things that I had to, to learn the hard way. It's just nice that I can just give this to you all. Like, like if, like, like I've, for some things to realize things, it took me years. And if I if I can just you know transfer that knowledge and transfer that experience, I think I think that helps a lot more. But that still won't make you the best mixing engineer. That's going to that's go. Oh man, how do you become the best mixing? Engineer? I don't know. Um, Flake, big fan of your videos. First time catching a live stream thanks for all the great content yeah um th thank thanks a lot for being my viewer a um th there's there's only one thing that's important for a youtube channel and that is the viewers without viewers there's no youtube channel that's the, that's the base of all and that's also why why I, I i like to have a community supported channel instead of doing sponsored videos it's kind of interesting how uh, how the comments were in this in the, during this live stream about uh, sponsored videos, about sponsored content. Um, uh, but yeah, I, I still I still haven't found a correct way, an ethically correct way, a, a, a way that that feels right to me to do such, such things. If I would ever figure it out, you will know the of course. All the viewers would know it uh, first, of course, and I would of course disclose that all in my videos. Uh, that's also something that. That I miss in a lot of uh, YouTube videos, not only in the audio, but but generally. Like I want to know, I want to know all the, um, all the behind the scenes things. Like like what is happening behind the scenes? That uh, you know, did you get money? Did you get something else? Uh, you know, that that's I think it's really important to uh, to tell in a video. 
Have you thought about reviewing the MP MIDI controller? Uh, yes, I did actually review it and um, I didn't like it. Um, I just, you know, the concept is really great. It's actually, it's actually a really great concept, but it just doesn't like the workflows just, just doesn't, doesn't really work. Anyway, I think I'm going to round off this live stream and um, yeah, um, I, don't, I don't think I have anything else to say. Thanks a lot for being with me uh, during this, this first live stream. Um, I'll be back soon. Um, again, I'm going to try to do these live streams every month. Uh, maybe I'll do them more often. I, I hope I hope I can um, uh, I can find a schedule. Maybe maybe I can only do them once a month. Uh, I'll make sure to notify everybody about it like three or four hours before I'm going live. And uh, yeah, let's just see where this goes. This live streaming. I don't know. Maybe it's just going to be like like an hour of Q and A. I don't know yet. We'll figure out what what the best thing is. Anyway, as always, thanks a lot for watching. Keep pushing, and I'm using the wrong hand because I need to press the button here. And bye-bye.